Let's suppose your teacher offered you some candy. What if they told you that you can keep the candy, but only if you select the right amount? How would you know how to find the correct answer? You're looking to find the correct fraction of a whole number. So how do you do it? That's what we're gonna learn today. And by the time we're done, you'll be able to find a fraction of any whole number. So let's get to it. Hey guys, it's Mr. D back with you again to work on some more math. If you're new to the channel, make sure you give us a like and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of our videos and help others find us too. Today we're talking about how to find a fraction of a whole number. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back to our original candy problem. We have 24 candies, but we can only take 5 eighths of them. So how many is that? What's being asked here is this. What is 5 eighths of 24? Now there are two ways to solve problems like these. I'm going to start by showing you the easiest way, and then I'll also explain why you'll also need to learn it the other way. So let's solve this problem. Watch how simple this is. To find 5 eighths of 24, we're going to see if the denominator, 8, can go perfectly into the whole number, 24. In other words, if I counted by eighths, would I land on 24? In this problem, yes. So, 8 goes into 24 perfectly. And that means I can use the easy strategy. Here's how it goes. 8 times what makes 24? 3. So I'm going to write a times 3 next to the 8 like this. Okay, now if I do times 3 on the bottom, I need to do times 3 on the top, okay? Whatever I do to the bottom number, I need to do to the top number. So, 5 times 3 is 15. And guess what? That's the answer. 5 eighths of 24 is 15. Now, how the heck did that work? Well, let's look at this model. All right, let's look at those 24 candies again. To find 5 eighths would mean I need to first split the 24 candies into 8 equal groups. Each of these groups is 1 eighth of 24. So to find 5 eighths, I would need to know how many are in 5 groups. And that's easy, right? 5 of these groups would make 15. So what I showed you earlier is kind of the shortcut for solving this type of problem. Now, let's switch up the numbers into a different problem, okay? Let's meet Franklin. Franklin has 36 tomatoes and is going to bring 8 ninths of them to the farmer's market. So how many tomatoes will he bring? The math problem here is, what is 8 ninths of 36? So, start by looking at the denominator and the whole number. Can 9 go into 36 perfectly? You bet it can. 9 times 4 equals 36. So I'm going to put a times 4 next to the 9. And just like before, whatever I do to the bottom number, I'll do to the top number. So if I do times 4 on the bottom, I'm going to do times 4 on the top. So what is 8 times 4? 32. And that's the answer. 8 ninths of 36 equals 32. But now, let's crank the difficulty level just a tad. Remember how I said there'd be a harder way to do this too? Well, let me show you why you might have to use that harder strategy. Let's go back to our old pal Franklin. This time he has to feed some horses. He has 13 bales of hay, and he needs to feed three-fourths of those bales to the horses. How many bales of hay is that? The math problem here is this. What is three-fourths of 13? If we try our other strategy, we'd have some problems. Can you see why? It's because 4 can't go into 13 perfectly. If I count by 4s, I won't land on 13. So I can't do that first strategy. When this happens, don't sweat it. All you have to do is turn this problem into a fraction multiplication problem. Now we've covered this in a previous lesson, so if you need more practice with multiplying fractions by whole numbers, click the description box or click the link up here. 3 fourths times 13 is going to become 3 fourths times 13 over 1. Because as you may remember, when you multiply by a whole number, you always write that whole number as a fraction over 1. Now we check for cross simplifying. But we can't in this problem, so we're going to go right into multiplying straight across. 
3 times 13 is 39, and 4 times 1 is 4. So I've got 39 over 4. Now, I need to turn this back into a mixed number since 39 over 4 is improper, and that's just division. 4 goes into 39 9 times, so that's our whole number. Now, 4 times 9 is 36, and it'd take 3 more to count up to 39, so 3 becomes our numerator. The denominator stays the same, so we have our final answer, which is 9 and 3 fourths. By the way, for what it's worth, you can use the turn it into a multiplication problem for any fraction of a whole number problems, even the easier ones we did earlier. However, as a teacher, my advice is this. If you have an easier method that can get you the right answer, do it. Math is all about finding the simplest way to calculate the right answer. So if you have a math shortcut, use it. Okay, practice time. Grab your paper and pencil and let's go to the whiteboard. I've got two different problems for you to look at. They're both asking to find a fraction of a whole number. Can you see which one we use the easy strategy with? Is it the red one or the blue one? You can use the easy strategy with the red one. How do we know? Because when I look at the denominators, I can see that 3 goes into 18 perfectly, but with the blue problem, 5 does not go into 12 perfectly. So let's go ahead and solve the red problem. 2 thirds of 18. Start with the denominator. 3 times what gets me to 18? 6. Now, just like we saw earlier, whatever I do to the bottom, I've got to do to the top. So if it's times 6 at the bottom, it'll be times 6 at the top. So what's 2 times 6? 12, of course. And that's the answer. 2 thirds of 18 is 12. Now, for the blue problem. I can't do the easy strategy because 5 doesn't go perfectly into 12. So that means I need to make this a regular multiplication problem. So we'll do 4 fifths times 12 over 1. I can't cross simplify here. So I just need to multiply straight across. 4 times 12 is 48, and 5 times 1 is 5. Now I need to turn it back into a mixed number. 5 goes into 48 9 times, so that's my whole number. 5 times 9 is 45, so how many more to get up to 48? 3, and that's my numerator. And the denominator stays the same. Now we've got 9 and 3 fifths as our answer. And I know I'm already in simplest form because it was cross simplified as far as it could go before I ever multiplied. For more math videos like this or for the 60 second version of this skill, check out the links that you see on the screen here. Until next time, I'm Mr. D. Thanks for joining me.